What is going on, my masketeers? Welcome back to another episode of The Mask, and we are here to talk about Netflix's Supercell, created by UK artist Ratman. And the premise of the show is this a group of South Londoners end up developing superpowers. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where have I heard this before? Does this feel a little bit like misfits? Does it feel a little bit like heroes? Does it feel a little bit like Black Lightning? Well, it's all three mixed into one. With that comes good and bad. And in this episode, we're going to talk about it. Let's dive in. Is Supercell a supercharged hit or is it a static buzz? The premise, we follow an individual by the name of Mike. He's living a normal life. He's a delivery man. He's in love. Out of nowhere, he discovers that he has abilities. Now, his abilities in question allows him to travel into the future where he meets his future self and then he also comes across other individuals in the future that have powers. Now, his future self tells him that his girlfriend, who's soon to be his fiance, will die and in order for her to live, he needs all five of the individuals that he sees in this future because they're fighting an unknown war and an unknown enemy. He then goes back in time, which is his present, and there he goes on the mission to try and find these individuals that he saw in the future that he needs to save his girlfriend slash fiance. That's the broad strokes of the show and then you get into each individual and their stories along with their set of powers. As the story progresses, you see how all of their lives kind of cross into each other and they've all bumped into each other at one point, but they've never really taken heed, which I thought was a very interesting concept, especially due to the fact it was quite relatable. You bump into people all the time and you never really think anything of it until you need them. So I like the way they all kept on crossing paths with one another, just living their daily lives, but they never necessarily got involved with each other until Mike needs them to change the future. With that being said, I'm not really going to get into every character. I'm just going to give you my thoughts on the show as a whole and try to keep it as spoiler free as possible so that you guys can go watch it for yourselves and come to your conclusion. I'm going to start off with the good of the show. For me, the one thing which I really liked were two aspects. One was the powers origin and two were the implications of said powers. With Supercell, you find out that throughout the whole series, these powers are actually tied into a well-known illness, especially within the black community, which is sickle cell anemia. And so all of the individuals that develop powers, they all are carriers or they all have parents and lineage that is linked to sickle cell. It's a mutation of that, hence the name Supercell, which again, I thought was a very good concept, especially due to the fact of it's one spreading light and awareness to an illness that affects the black population. It flips it on its head and and it turns them into superheroes, essentially. I did like that aspect. I thought it was quite original, and I, I thought it was a good spin on something that is quite known, especially within the black community. As far as I'm concerned, only black people can really and truly get powers. Now, yes, I do know that there are some other ethnicities that can contract sickle cell, but primarily it's black people. In this universe and this narrative, black people are the ones that can get powers. The second thing which I like, the cinematography, of the entire show because especially when it comes to the UK you rarely find shows where everything feels vibrant normally when it comes to the UK cameras they're always muted the colours and the palette is never really engaging whereas I feel this show it looked so crisp I liked the visual aspect of it everything just looked on point so those are like my two highlights now when it comes to the abilities that they gave everybody nothing really out of the ordinary <laughs> forgive the pun when it came to the powers themselves so you've got the main character Mike like I mentioned he can essentially control time his powers develop as the show goes on he's then able to freeze time teleport and even time travel but primarily backwards only for a short amount of time so let's just say maybe a minute at best and it's more involuntary so it's whenever like his life 
is in danger that's when that power really activates he doesn't really have conscious control of it or well, at least in the beginning of the season he didn't have control of it as the season progresses he begins to learn more control and implement his powers in different ways and one of the biggest abilities that he possesses is to teleport when i think about it he has space and time so he not only controls time he controls space i liked his abilities then there's andre with andre's story he has a single father trying to change his life around trying to do better he's just trying to find a job and take care of his son and who can look down at a man trying to do right his baby mother though oh my god i won't even lie to you she was just difficult for no reason vex that's why you have to be careful who you lay with if you lay with the wrong person you're tired for life and if they're bad vibes that's bad vibes so his ability is he possesses super strength that's basically it i think he has some invulnerability that's not really made clear and i will say that it's actually quite inconsistent within the show due to the fact when he uses his super strength he can punch through steel buildings and he doesn't get hurt but then he can kind of get cut by a knife so again i don't really know how that works then you got taser okay now taser his power is invisibility and let me not even lie to you he's going to be tied to the bad aspect his power didn't really make that much sense especially due to his storyline he can go invisible and that's it and he has knives that's not a superpower but when you're from the ends a knife is your best friend so mixed in with the ability to become invisible it's good but it doesn't really suit his story nor does it suit his character now the other two i can't even remember their names we're just gonna go with speedy and nurse lady forgive me forgive me i apologize nurse she is telekinetic and in the future she also learns the ability to fly which is a standard especially when you have telekinesis move things with your mind it's not far-fetched to be able to move yourself and be able to fly so in the beginning basic telekinesis as the season goes on we know her endpoint her endpoint will be she will be able to fly as you just kind of see her gradual progression then we get on to speedy and if i'm being real speedy to me after taser he is one of my least favorite characters as the name suggests speedy has super speed he has the ability to move subsonic due to the fact or he might even be even faster than that because he was able to get from london to dublin in the space of seconds even that again it's a little bit weird and the reason why i say it's a little bit weird is because when you look at his ability he just moves and he doesn't even know he's done it he breaks into a run and and then his speed activates. Now, my only thing is, I don't get how he's able to avoid everything. He doesn't hit anything. Doesn't hit people. Doesn't trip over nothing. And he doesn't even know where he's going. He will literally run and the speed will activate. And then when he stops, he's in a whole other location. Which was a little bit weird to me. Maybe because I feel the boys ruined me. Watching A-Train, A-Train is aware of what he's doing. And he purposely has to avoid things. Because again, if you've seen the boys, you've already seen how episode one starts when a train just ran right through someone and again that was because he was moving so fast due to the fact that he was hopped up on the equivalent of cocaine that he couldn't even keep up with his own speed he couldn't see anything he just saw like the blur as he was moving faster than he's ever moved before so i just thought it's a little bit weird that this guy moves fast and he's not aware of where he's moving to he never hits anything he just instinctively is able to navigate but that's a little nitpick yeah those are the powers of audience individuals and i know i said this is meant to be the good and i kind of went on a tangent and it seems like the bad but i promise it's not bad we're gonna get to that part we're gonna get to that part another good was i liked that there was an organization that was based around helping people that suffer from sickle cell and from the jump you could already tell something was amiss something just didn't feel right in the words of beanie siegel i could feel it in the air i felt it something was wrong and nine times out of ten whenever white people trying to help black people always know that there's ulterior motive they they would never give us the best care which doesn't cost us anything well i say anything but it doesn't cost as much as it should and they're just doing it out of the kindness of their own hearts now i know that sounds crazy but it is what it is especially when it comes to superhero movies and shows whenever white people doing things for the black community there's always something lurking in the back someone's always plotting someone's always 
scheming. That element of the show and that undertone, I'll call it the subplot, I really like. Let me also say another character I really enjoyed, it took a while for him to grow on me, was Craze played by Getz, aka Ghetto. Listen, like I said, I wasn't really feeling his character in the beginning, but as time went on, I did like him. Did I think he was a main villain though? Spoiler alert, sorry. No, I kind of grew to like the character. I just didn't feel that he should have been endgame. I think that he was a good setup and maybe just be, again, a character that is doing things where you can use in the later seasons as the guy that is the connect he always has something he's always plotting but he's not the guy he's more of a b villain but he didn't give me main villain energy i'm just saying that from now somebody who gave me villain energy he wasn't even on the screen for that much by the way he's not in this show he's in another show which was uh, was on prime called um jungle and that's ra real artillery yo let me tell you in less than 10 minutes this man solidified his spot to me as one of the greasiest villains i have ever seen if they put ra as the main villain in supercell i would have messed with that i would have messed with that heavy but anyway i digress let me get back to it gets i liked his character he grew on me he had some real moments i think the best line that he said in the entire series was in the final episode when he's talking about they're the babies he the father that line delivery was spot on cold cold now we're gonna get onto the bad of the show i feel my biggest gripe with this show was the fact that it was based in south london and they still leaned into the gang element now i didn't mind in the beginning but when the gang element kept on coming up and it took more time than it should have that's where i just felt annoyed only because i feel when it comes to the uk especially black film and cinema it is so oversaturated with the gangs with the hood with the ends i'm tired i am tired we got it with top boy we had it with blue story we had it with kid adulthood we had it with adulthood too many movies that depict black narrative within the uk is always setting around the ends the hood but it's the struggle man i ain't trying to hear that you're giving me a superhero show let me feel like i'm in a world where new perspectives are given now don't get me wrong mike was not in the hood he was again working a normal nine to five same thing with Andre who had the super strength it kind of went he didn't really go down the hood path but his friend was all about yo let's start rubbing with your powers and then you have the nurse who she's not in the hood but she's got connection in the hood through her sister another character we're gonna get into her in a minute but she was another negative for me let me stick to this point though because of that it felt like I was watching Top Boy just with powers at certain points and that's not what I want to watch I do not want to watch another a hood movie in the uk powers or no powers give me something else that was one of like my biggest issues then the other part which i didn't really like was essentially certain characters and why people did what they did their motivations at time were dumb and then another times just purely lackluster speaking of a character that to me was just dumb in general was nurse sister her character was just trash and when i say trash nothing that she did really made made any sense she wasn't written properly and i feel that's something that happens with a lot of characters they're not fully flushed out they're good concepts but then the execution not so much and i don't know if that's due to how ratman writes or he just can't write characters that well because i felt the same with blue story certain characters motivation and how things happen didn't really make that much sense and narratively it just didn't mesh well because of that I wasn't really that invested in a lot of these characters. That's one thing which I will say. I didn't really care for any of these characters. They weren't written in a way to where they were endearing or charming or give me anything which made me root for them. I just felt to myself, okay, cool. These are the characters and this is what we're doing. So let's go. There were moments where certain things happened and I felt it. Other than that, I wasn't really sold on the characters. The plot was what was keeping me going and let's talk about the plot because
because for me that's another negative due to the fact that they were so focused on the hood element it detracts from the plot and the main problem or the main reason is taser taser's storyline takes up way too much time nothing really happens in this season nothing really happens in the sense of we know why he needs to gather them well we know why mike needs to gather them in part but we don't know the reason and what's coming for them and rather than going through the season and small bits of that mystery is revealed to us we just go on a whole rigmarole <laughs> a whole rigmarole of hood politics because taser's storyline just takes over and again it's trash i found it boring and his powers don't make sense for what he does he's just a road man can go invisible and they call him ghost but again it doesn't really hit i felt he should have had like teleportation or maybe a healing factor that would have made sense with the life that he lives because he keeps on making very dumb choices to where because he's not invincible he can just go invisible it's silly some of the choices he makes and the moves that he does you would think that he's unkillable but he's not so you just kind of sit there wondering wait why would you say that why would you do that because you you put yourself in danger and you have no exit plan whereas if he could teleport he can get out of any situation that would make sense if he had a healing factor he's pretty much invincible he's willing to take more risk because he can't be killed you can put that there's consequences for those around him but him himself he doesn't fear death because death can't touch him that would have made more sense in why he's arrogant and why he does some of the things that he does but all this guy can do is go invisible and i'm sorry when it comes to the ranking of powers that is at the bottom tier bottom tier like i said characters for me and their motivations that's where the story suffers the most and because of that the most interesting thing about the story, which is the subplot, how they got their powers, the organization that is essentially putting them in concentration camps. I say concentration camps, I'm being a bit extreme, but they've been held in a facility where they run tests on them to find out how their powers work. And we don't even know if they're trying to replicate their powers or they just want to understand why this happens. How has the gene mutated? But again, those are answers we don't know because the show doesn't have time for it. It only starts Starts to pick up on the last episode and i'm sorry that is not it you can't give us i think the season is six episodes if it's not six it's eight episodes but you can't give me eight episodes or six episodes and for the bulk of it nothing has happened and the last two episodes or the last episode should i say that's where things kick off nah that is not it that is not it at all so because of that it kind of detracts from the whole overall story i didn't really like that too much so that's an overview of the good and the bad in conclusion supercell I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a six. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a six out of ten. I really wanted to like this show like wholeheartedly, and don't get me wrong, it's not a bad show. I think it has a lot of promise if they can just tap into the elements that work in its favor, and that being the uniqueness of it, and not go down the road of trying to make this a hood show just with powers we kind of had that with misfits back in the day i don't know if people watched that but that was a show which was based in the hood i don't know which hood that show was based in somewhere in london with young offenders who end up getting powers and then it just devolved into just pure trash but we're not gonna go down memory lane because the way misfits ended hurts my soul to this very day so i feel that again those elements don't work for this show they should stick to the bits that work the bits at work are the whole secret organization that is kidnapping black people to study them to find out how these powers work and whether or not they can be replicated they need to zero in more on that and speaking on that i won't even lie to you this thing reminded me of season three of black lightning <laughs> <laughs> and no one can tell me different. No one can tell me different. If you haven't seen Black Lightning, in season three, the government started picking up soups or metas. They started running experiments on them, but you find that the majority of people that have the meta gene, or at least in the Black Lightning universe, were black people. The government starts taking them, experimenting on them, and trying to turn them into weapons and to control them. That is literally what's happening in this season. And that's why I felt that Rap Man took a lot of influence from Black Lightning. 
Canyon. He also took a lot of influence from Heroes with the first season where the concept was save the cheerleader, save the world. Except for in this context, it's save your fiance, save the world. It took elements of that. Like I said, it kind of had beats from Misfits. And as a whole, it's an amalgamation of those three. Do all of those three elements work? Yes and no. In some parts, it's really good. In other parts, not so much. And that's when they lean too much on the hood elements. And also, when it comes down to the writing of characters, there's much to be desired. I feel that Ratman can kind of tighten his pen game up a little bit in that respect. And also, why certain events happen. And before I forget, it took way too long for these people to finally cross paths. Let me just say that. When they finally are on one accord, it is the second to last episode when they're all together. No, absolutely. Absolutely not. Especially if the end game was always for them to link up by the end of the season, they should have put more things in place to where by the midpoint, they're already converging with one another. You can do it differently, like they did in Heroes, where you had different characters in different locations and it's all coming to a head, but each one's story is interlinked in some shape and some form, but they're all coming to the same conclusion, but the build-up is that conclusion. Then you can draw out their interaction. But if that's not the case with the show, then they have to meet much sooner so that by the time you're getting to the end, it makes sense why they're all coming together. So with that being said, yeah, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. I really do hope it gets to season 2. I hope that during that time, Ratman can weave the story a little bit neater, trim some of the fat, take away the hood elements, dive into the conspiracy and the secret organization parts of the show. And yeah, also make a good, a good introduction to characters that's more memorable or write these characters to where, again, they're just a bit more endearing. Those are my thoughts about the show if you've watched the show please let me know sound off in the comments let's get active if you haven't watched the show are you gonna watch it like always like comment subscribe and i will see you at the next masquerade peace